Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Can't talk today. For June 30th, 2018, the last day of the month of June, I hope your weekend is going well. Nothing to worry about from the tropics uh, on the Atlantic or the Pacific side. 2018, the July 4th week coming up, will not feature any tropical troubles. So that's good. You can just stop the video now and enjoy your vacation. Uh, we do have a few things to talk about, so let's get rid of me and at least show you what's going on by the way of showing you what's not going on. Nothing in the next 48 hours and nothing within the next 120 hours in the Atlantic Basin. Of course, the Eastern Pacific is very busy. We do have the remnants of Amelia here, and then this is soon to be um, the next system uh, in the Eastern Pacific, 97E, well on its way to developing. And if we mouse over that, you can see it's almost there. I thought it would have, would have done so by now, but it's struggling just a little bit, so it'll take a little bit longer. And then this really doesn't have much of a chance of development, which is interesting because, as I said, with all the activity in this area, I believe that only this system, whoops, tried to draw on it, only this system, which will eventually become Fabian, has a chance to become a strong hurricane and you know it just something just doesn't seem ideal maybe it's the climatology the fact that it is just june and when we see a burst like this again later on down the road at the next favorable time period perhaps things will be stronger uh awesome satellite loop here from levi cowan and tropicaltidbits.com you have the atlantic basin a good deal of it anyway and the eastern pacific i just noticed this today so kudos to Levi for putting this together. Here's the remnant circulation of Amelia, all that cooler water indicated. And you can tell it's there because of the stratocumulus clouds above that cooler water. And then here's 97E, almost a depression, but it's, you know, it's just trying to wrap up. It's got that yin-yang look to it, but it's not quite there yet. But it, it'll do so. Do not worry about that. Uh, and who is worried, right? And this system over here, again, low chance of development over the next few days. And even in this satellite imagery, this loop, you can tell a little bit of this haziness through here, indicating the African dust that's come across. And I have learned, thanks to the wonderful world of folks posting comments on YouTube and elsewhere, that yes, in fact, the dust does uh, exacerbate asthma problems and some upper respiratory issues, depending on its concentration. I am not affected by it. I don't have asthma myself, so I did not know that. But it's nice to see that people who are in the know took the time to comment. So I appreciate that. It's good to know for future reference. All right, so looking at the real-time analysis and guidance here, we do have this, hey, there, there's the kids acting up again, this uh, tropical storm, soon to be typhoon. What is that? Prey-perun, properun, prey perun, something like that. I am sorry, I can't get it right. Uh, they're not all going to be named Bob, put it that way. <laughs> Daphne doesn't agree with that. But uh, up it goes towards South Korea, probably going to intensify into a low-end typhoon, as we can see with the intensity guidance here. Uh, still no super typhoon expected out of it, so that's good. It will bring a lot of rainfall, though, to the region, and that, of course, can be a big problem. So this will affect the Korean Peninsula here and maybe southwest Japan. Pretty far to the west, this is developing, and it has been a while since we have seen anything of significance down here in sort of Typhoon Alley. And, you know, maybe it'll get busy later in the season, maybe not. Meanwhile, there's the remnants of Amelia, so we won't worry about that. I did want to show you this. I took a peek at this earlier. You remember yesterday when I talked about the guidance envelope and how tight it was? <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. Honest to goodness, that is absolutely incredible. And even, you know, out at day five, look at how tight that clustering is. You don't see that very often, folks. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, either the global computer models have suddenly become really good, or it's just a really easy pattern to forecast. I'm going to assume that it is the latter, that it's just an easy pattern to forecast. And the same is generally true for the intensity guidance up and up. Uh, what will eventually be Fabian will go. Probably makes Category 3 at some point. Wouldn't surprise me. And then it'll fizzle out as it heads towards colder water in its lifespan as it moves on to the west. Over Africa, a lot of convection. That's for sure. 
very strong African easterly waves. Uh, D.E. Steve, Delaware Steve, our good friend Steve Sorinko from Delaware, where else, right, was uh, tweeting at me today about the mention from the Climate Prediction Center of the above normal overall precip across this portion of Africa. Um, and that might matter later down the road. Uh, it certainly hasn't mattered in terms of keeping the Saharan air layer in check. But honestly, if you think about it, all this heavy rain that's falling under these clouds, you know, the Sahara Desert, folks, is up here. And this is where your big doses of Saharan air come from. That's why it's called the Saharan air layer. Later, as the intertropical convergence zone down here migrates more to the north with time, then the precip will start falling farther to the north, and it will sort of dampen the desert a little bit and knock down some of that Saharan air. Uh, but it's interesting to note that it is, you know, on the radar, so to speak, of uh, some of the experts, Climate Prediction Center in this case, noting that it's been kind of wetter than normal across the tropical regions here of Africa thus far this summer. So we'll see as we get to August and September how much that matters or not. And you can see, of course, the Saharan air, very prevalent. There's a couple of dents in it from these tropical waves. But then over the African continent itself, lots and lots of moisture gathering, and it'll move west with time. Remember, on Monday, we will have the updated uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. I'll take a look at the ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, and how that's going. Um, tomorrow, I think I'm just going to take the day off. There's just not much to talk about and, you know, just work on equipment or something. And believe me, when I say take the day off, that doesn't mean I don't pay attention to the tropics at all or work on something. I'm always tinkering every day of the year. I'm thinking about it or working on something, dreaming up the next big idea. But no video tomorrow. There's just not a lot going on, nothing threatening land. So we're going to all just kind of take a breather, and we'll wait for Monday. That'll make it even better on Monday, right? And uh, that'll be more lengthy as we again take a look at the latest update from the NOAA NESDA sea surface temperature anomalies. I want to see if the lowering of the pressures that we have been watching in the ensemble prediction system from the Euro has made any kind of a difference. We'll also check the overall trade wind pattern. I'm going to really load it up on Monday since, uh, I mean, I'll be here tomorrow, but I'm going to take the day off. What the heck? Not, you know, it'd just be a regurgitation of what we talked about today, to be quite honest with you. So that being said, you guys have a great rest of your Saturday. Enjoy Sunday, too. That's all part of the package of the weekend, and I will do the same. I am Mark Settle, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and we'll reconvene again on Monday.